In this video, we're going to talk about how I create true fire like this. Um, this is for a beginner. Um, I didn't want to do too much. I didn't want to get to a very large surface so I could just kind of explain the techniques and not get anybody overwhelmed because if this is your first time doing it, I found many of the tutorials I have seen have been uh, very overly long and not explaining anything and just makes things even more complicated than they should be. Now, in this particular case, I am going to have the fire start out like appearing in the middle flaming up and then flaming away as if something were to have caught fire in the air or it's just a lick of flame that had skipped out so when i come in with my red i'm going to come in like and cover some areas i will work in this motion like this and you really can't mess this part of it up But it can make it better or worse, depending on how, you know, you lay it out. Okay, now I want to take my really, really awesome and super, super expensive, uh, True Fire Shield, which is basically I just cut some a random puzzle-looking type shape. The only important thing about cutting something like this, you want to make sure you have none of these are repeating. You don't want any of these to repeat, so that you know you can buy True Fire stencils. That's great. In this particular case, I actually have some, but in this case, I wanted to show you you can do this with anything. Okay, before we start talking about the licks, I want you to remember this. Fire is always trying to go up um, as it's combusting and heat is rising. It's the gases and stuff like that. The licks and the flames you see are where air currents and, you know, the gas currents because of the heat and air around it is pushing things to the side. So if you've got fire that's moving in a direction, it's always going to try to correct itself up. So if you've got a lick, you're pulling sideways and that lick's going this way. It's always going to try to correct back upwards to, and turn back to the direction of up. Um, you can have fire on a vehicle and stuff that's going down, but that is where wind is pushing it. So, But you got to remember, for those licks in there, they're always striving to go up. The fire is always trying to push up. So I'm going to come in with some white. And I'm going to start down here on my lowest lick and I'm gonna come in with some white I'll put a little shield action on it and then freehand but I don't want a lot of stencils going on just yet and I don't want a lot of work into this fire just yet so I'm gonna come around and as I was saying same thing that fire is gonna be correcting itself and when you come off this edge let it spread out so that it's hot and then cooling off the gases are forming and coming back around and then we're going to tie these together we're going to take another cut shape and then we're going to come back around from that direction and then another from this direction we want to fill in our fire and then when I do a lick like that it's like that fire is in behind that other lick you realize it's not gonna look like much of anything right now Now that I've got some white to work with, I'm coming in with transparent orange. And like anything else, I don't want to just flood fill this whole thing. 
leave some highlights. Now we're gonna get our shield back out and we're gonna get our white back out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in, we're gonna start accentuating hot spots. We don't wanna cover everything. We wanna stay within the orange layer that we worked on. When we worked on the orange layer, we wanted to stay within the red layer. And when we work on this next layer, we wanted to stay within the orange layer. So, Find the spots that are going to be hot, like here, where the flames come together, and then and then again, where it makes that curve around. that flame is hotter. Might extend this out. Now, I'm taking transparent yellow. Notice we haven't used any candy at all yet. I'm gonna start coming in with my yellow. And just like before, we're not gonna flood fill the whole thing. Come back in, cover your white spots, let that yellow run out into the red just a little bit. But don't just go in here and start flooding it because you do not want to destroy everything you've done before. Even though it doesn't look like we did much before, that having that kind of loose look to it in the background is important. And then we will go back to our white and do even smaller hot spots than we did before. And we want those to be pretty, pretty tight spots. Now I'm going to come in with my candy, which I'm going to come in with my candy blood red, and I'm going to kind of stay off this middle a little bit, but I'm going to come around these edges. It's going to intensify the glow effect on the outer edge, and I'll use it, I'll pay attention to that I'm using it in here. Before I do anything else, I'm actually going to take my tequila yellow. And I'm going to let the tequila yellow cover the entire thing. Now, if we want to do more hot spots from here, which I do, what we're going to have to do is let that dry for a moment and put a barrier coat of bleed check on top of that. Now, I cleaned my cup so that there was going to be no contamination from the previous candy. And I've got bleed checker inside my airbrush. And I'm going to coat this all of my artwork section. Nice, good coat on it. Straight out of the bottle. No reducer. If you use reducer, it will reactivate the candy layer and cause some bleeding to go on. Now, I've let it sit. And what I'm going to do is further define the hottest spots of my fire. And it'll be small, little spots 
I'm gonna put a little white in there. In my hottest spots. I'm going to take some lemon yellow. And just hit those spots. I'm Bill Kennedy with W. Leon Artistry, and I appreciate you guys stopping by our channel. Make sure that if you're new here, you hit the subscribe and the notification bell so that you can get notified of any new videos we got coming out. I'm going to do some more tutorials on True Fire and get into different colors, but I wanted to start out with just a very small piece so as not to overwhelm anybody who's just starting out. Uh, it's important to understand you're going to have to practice this. It's very, very difficult to get a grasp on the first few times you do it. But then once you grasp it, you've pretty much got it. You can start creating fire on anything you want. But anyway, um, that's about it for today. Y'all have a good one. We will see you on the next time.